MS final theory exams are a beast. And when I started preparing for my theory exams, I remember staring at those huge books, Bailey, Sabiston and Schwartz, and I didn't know where to start. But over time, I created the system that worked for me. And in this video, I'll be breaking down paper by paper how I studied, which books I relied upon, and the notes that saved me during revision time. So hey guys, this is Dr. Sonalika Gupta. I'm an SR in general surgery. In the beginning, I started studying really hard. I would take a chapter and start reading it from page one. But quickly I realized it's not just about studying hard, but also about studying smartly. Now the very first step before you start preparing for an exam is to know the absolute scope of the exam. Basically what kind of questions are being asked again and again and the best thing to do is, is by going through the 10 year papers. What I did was simple. I took the last 10 year papers. Then I wrote all the 20 markers on a sheet of paper. Then I did the same thing for 10 markers and then for the 6 markers. And the questions that were being repeated, I put a star in front of them. So I knew exactly what topics are being tested, what topics are being tested frequently and what topics are not being tested. And it is not to say that you skip the rest of the syllabus, but when you are short of time and you need to prioritize, you should know what topics exactly to focus on. Now let's divide this video into four parts. Let's come on to your paper one, which is a general surgery paper. So the main book that I referred for this exam was Bailey. So the basic principles from Bailey. So this include your metabolic response to injury, shock, wound healing, topical infections, basic surgical skills, imaging, molecular diagnosis, surgical audit and ethics. For the general paper, I didn't complicate things. Bailey was the most important resource here. Along with Bailey, what I did is I went through the recent MAMC updates. So I gave the exam in 2024. So from 2014 till 2024, I had all the MAMC updates PDF. And if there was any recent update or any point that I thought was lacking, I would add onto my notes. But the main thing here is to trust your own system. So what happens is you are really anxious and your co VG will come up and ask you any random topic or will start quizzing you on that one point that you don't remember and then suddenly FOMO starts hitting you and you go out and refer that same topic from multiple books but what you don't realize is you need to study smart because you have a lot to cover and the time is very limited. So trust the notes that you have made. So I've been making notes since my second year of residency. What I used to do is I used to open my iPad and whatever topic was being discussed or the case that I had in ward, I would read that up, say, Sabiston or Bailey. And then I used to make notes, whether it was on my iPad or I would take this hospital sheets and start making points about that topic. What I did over time, I collected all these notes and I divided it into four folders. So that way I had different folder for each of my paper. When you are closer to the exam and you are just trying to revise, you are at least not wasting your time trying to find where your notes are. So I would suggest arranging your notes however which way you like. I arrange them according to the scope of paper but you can arrange them according to the system or according to the book you've read from. So it totally depends on you. And then once when I have to start revising for a paper, let's say paper one is a month away. So I take this notebook which has all the paper one notes and I'll start reading all those topics. So that way I'm not bored with one system alone. I'm getting a mix of all the systems and then I'll leave that notebook. I go on to the next notebook. So then I'm reading about paper two. So that way after a few days, I'll return to paper one notebook. So this will also help me do spaced repetition and solidify the topics in my memory. Coming on to paper two, which was the GI paper and the endocrine paper. This was by far the most difficult paper to read for because the syllabus was so vast and all the topics seem important. My strategy for this paper was to really simplify my prep. For the core topics, I refer to Bailey and Sabiston and for endocrine, I refer to Schwartz. So what I did is I read the topic from the book. Then I made my notes according to how I want to write my notes in the paper. Somehow the audio didn't get recorded for this part of the video. So I am switching to a voiceover. So starting with the definition, the etiology, the pathology, how to make the diagnosis, then coming on to the management, the investigations and the surgery. I would make it a point to underline the important points about that particular disease 
or any important points that I need to remember in the search. Then I would refer to MAMC updates to see if there are any important points that I need to add. And I would draw any diagrams relevant to that topic and add a few points from recent advances. You are left with the note which is beautifully concised about everything you need to know about this topic and you don't need to refer multiple books again and again. Come exam day and all that is left to do is multiple revisions of this sheet. What you need to focus is once you are closer to the exam day, there is only a limited capacity of topics you can read in a single day. So try to make these notes very information heavy and try to eliminate all the noise so that you are left with only the most crucial points which will grab you all the marks. Coming on to paper 3 which is the operative paper. Here you are asked about uh, surgeries, their indications, their contraindications, the complications and also the steps. When you are asked about a surgery steps, you can't just get away with writing paragraphs and paragraphs. You have to be very thorough about your steps and also you have to make diagrams in this paper. I would recommend making diagrams of in all the papers if you can but especially in your operative paper there are two schools of thoughts if you are just asked about the steps of a surgery some people say you just write the steps and that is it but if it is a 20 marker i would suggest why is the surgery even done it's indications or in which situations it is contraindicated the patient position then the steps and then a short note about the complications as well just to go the extra mile if time permits that is for example if you are asked about splenectomy it is also a chance to write about the recent advances like the minimally invasive splenectomy you can mention about robotics since you are already reading about your recent advances paper anyways so you can use that information to include in the topics that are coming in paper 1, 2 and 3 as well to really solidify your answers. The resources that I used for paper 3, the operative exam, number one was Zollinger. So I bought Zollinger during my first year. Although I had its PDF, but on one page you have all the diagrams and on the other page you have all the operative steps. So it was very good when you could really visualize it. I made the notes from Zollinger, from Charson's operative manual and from SRB's operative manual. SRB is written in very easy to understand words and the lay of the topics is very similar to how you would replicate in the exam. Really recommend checking that out. The last exam is the recent advances exam. And I think by far this was the exam I was most ill prepared for because during your residency, you keep on reading a lot about paper one topics, two topics, three topics, but recent advances, not so much. It has very repetitive questions and it is a really scoring paper. So the resources I used for this paper were the last three editions of Roshan Lal and Irving Taylor. Another thing is instead of just passively reading your notes, try to actively recall what you've just read. So you read a topic, you close your book and try to remember step by step what you've just read. So that will help solidify everything that you've read. And once you've read a topic, so then you go and teach it to your co-PG or your junior so that you quickly revise it. When you explain it out loud, that's when you know that you actually know the topic. The bottom line is don't try to cram everything and only rely on your short term memory during the last days of your exam. Make notes early and try to revise them and re-revise them multiple times instead of gathering a lot of information at the end and stressing your mind out. Now coming on to some miscellaneous tips to end this video. Try to make very digestible notes. Don't write each and everything that you read. Just write the main points that you think that you'll forget. Try to segregate your notes according to paper or according to systems. Go through past papers because we have a tendency of revising only the topics that we like. So I like GI a lot. So I kept revising GI again and again. But once you go through the past papers, that's when you realize the real scope of the exam. Go in with exam mindset, underline the important points, draw diagrams and never ever leave a question blank. Even if you don't know that particular question, write something. MS exams are not about cramming and regurgitating on a piece of paper. It is to examine what you have really learned in the words these past three years. And I'm sure there's something that you can write about each question. At the end of the day, it's not about reading each book cover to cover. It's about studying smart. If I can do it, you can do it too. All the very best and I'll see you in the next video.